Well, hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Jason Levine, and for the next 25 minutes or so, I'll be talking to you about Adobe Character Animator, a new, exciting, oh, oh, excuse me there, and expressive character animation tool that allows you to perform your character's action without forcing you into the long and tedious task of editing keyframes and truly bringing your photo Photoshop and Illustrator artwork to life. Ha! All right, everyone. Well, hello and welcome. And as you just saw, that was me as a fish uh, recorded inside of Adobe Character Animator. And uh, what I'm going to do is, before we actually get into the animation part of this, I'm going to take you through the process and really showcase to you how easy it is to leverage your, again, Photoshop and Illustrator artwork to really bring it to life, to make it expressive, to do animation, and to do things really so easily, so quickly, and create very, very organic, beautiful looking animations um, in ways that you never thought you could before. So when we're inside Character Animator, we're basically dealing with two things. We have puppets, and we put those puppets inside of scenes. You can think of your scenes like a composition uh, in After Effects. And what you can see here is I have a puppet. This is a Photoshop file. His name is Frank. And if you take a look at my puppet panel over here on the left, you'll see all of the various layers. These are, in fact, Photoshop layers representative of all the various parts of Frank's face, head here. So we have the eyebrows, left and right, the mouth, the left eye, right eye, head, head fur, <laughs> I guess that's hair. You'll see that we have a whole series of different mouth shapes. You've got 10 different mouth shapes, three different uh, mouth expressions, smile, neutral, and surprised. And because this is Photoshop, uh, Photoshop files or Illustrator files, you can use standard command E edit original to launch Photoshop or Illustrator, coming from those original files, bring you into Photoshop or Illustrator. And you can see here again as we look down into the Layers panel, um, very simple. And if you follow these naming conventions, and or, or in other words, if you follow the rules and name your layers accordingly, your character will be automatically rigged up and ready to go. You won't need to do any additional rigging to be able to animate using your camera and the microphone on your machine. So this is really one of the amazing things about this is you name them properly, follow the rules, it's just going to work very, very simply. So just to kind of show you the back and forth that you have with Edit Original with Photoshop, again, this is nothing new to you. Oh, this, is, uh, this works in almost every one of our CC applications. Or just to come up here and do something like a, a ripple, just add a little distortion filter here just to kind of change the look of Frank, maybe make him a little more rigid here. Go ahead and save that, click back over to Character Animator, <clears throat> and you'll see that it automatically updates. So again, this is that kind of back and forth that you have. You've seen this in many different CC apps. Again, back over to Photoshop. Let's just step backward, undo, go ahead and save that. Let's just get out of Photoshop, back to Character Animator, and it updates again. Okay, so let's actually talk now about the process of animating, of making Frank come to life. And for this, of course, we're going to use our camera and our microphone. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn on my camera, and I need to set a rest pose. Turn on my microphone, and I'm just going to adjust the properties here. In our scene properties, you can say we've got our frame rate here. See, we've got our frame rate, duration of the scene, width and height. And now, as I talk, as I move my eyebrows, Frank's eyebrows move. As I blink, or wink, Frank blinks. My position, rotation, scale is all affected, all happening in real time. And of course, all of this can be recorded. And I'll show you that in just a moment. But you can see very easily, very quickly, we start to create <laughs> a very cool <sighs> kind of animation. You'll also notice that as you do this, you probably want to be alone. All right. Quiet crowd today. It is 9 AM. All right. Now, this is a very simple, very basic construction of a character. That's why I start with this one. Let's go to something a little more complex and actually showcase to you how you can make these more and more expressive. So I'm going to come over here and open up another project. And we're actually going to start with that fish that you saw moments ago and start talking about the behaviors, okay? And it's the behaviors that really allow for your expressive controls. So let me go ahead and start here. We're gonna open up our monster fish. 
and open up this puppet. Now I need to make a quick change to some of the scene properties here. So first and foremost, I'm going to adjust the frame rate. I'm going to adjust the height. And then I will set a new rest pose. This is going to ensure that the synchronization and the movements are better and more in sync. OK. So again, now, let's talk about how we make this more and more expressive. If we come back over to our puppet panel here, you're going to see, OK, more things happening here, more layers. And we're going to start with one of the first behaviors, something that's known as the dangle. And you'll see we've got a bunch of tools down here. And the dangle tool is basically going to allow you to um, add these little dangle handles that will make elements of your puppet sway or move very, um, very naturally, very organically. We've got this fish in the water, but his fins aren't moving. And I'd like his spike to kind of sway in the water too, right? There's something that's just not quite right. He looks very static. Uh, kind of strange. Well, as it turns out, we have the dangle applied here. And if I adjust my spring stiffness control, which you can see right here, you'll start to see, particularly on the spike at the top of my head, <laughs> that it starts to get nice and dangly. You can see my fin swaying. You can see I'm blinking. I'm very happy. You can see why you want to be alone. You realize I'm doing this in front of people. I'm a grown man with children, and I'm not embarrassed. OK? So that's the dangle, all right? And again, it's these behaviors that allow for this expressive control. And these can um, be modified locally or globally. Now, one other element here that seems to be missing to me is that the fish uh, isn't breathing. So if I come over to our project panel again, I'm going to open up a new scene. Again, I'll just change my frame rate. I like the look of the lip sync. I'm going to set another rest pose. <laughs> and let's go back to our properties panel. And now under behaviors, this is going to give you an idea of all the various behaviors, expressive behaviors that you can apply to this character. And in this case, I want to choose breathe. So when I choose breathe, Whoa, there you go. Now he's breathing. Now that's a bit extreme. So let's go ahead and change our max scale to around 115%. Change our minimum scale to around 103. And you'll see that we've also got some additional things applied here. If we look over at the face behavior, here's where we can adjust things like eye gaze. If you want this to look a bit more comical, a bit more cartoon-like, if I adjust the eye gaze strength, watch what happens here. You really have the eyes kind of pop out of the head <laughs> very nicely. Similarly, if I wanted to adjust maybe the mouth strength, I can make the adjustment there. <laughs> this is a lot of fun, but you kind of have to sink to the lowest part of your silliness sometimes when you're playing around with these things. But that's how you make them more expressive. That's what makes it so fun. And again, it is fun. It's fun and it's easy. And uh, it's absolutely wonderful to be able to create these things ever so quickly. I'm not an animator. I would never be able to animate lips and movement and behaviors like this. And this is all happening just with my webcam. Again, we're allowing the external control of the webcam and the microphone to give us this expressive control. All right. So continuing on with that, what about something like keyboard triggers? Well, you have the ability here to trigger different layers. For instance, this is a puffer fish. So if I go over to my trigger puppet here, let me just uh, open up my trigger scene, set another rest pose. And again, I'm just going to quickly adjust my frame rate here. With my scene panel selected, you'll notice over here in the layers panel that we have a sub puppet here, monster fish pupper. <laughs> monster, let, me, let me say that again. You'll notice over here that we have a layer that says monster fish puffer. It's, Shortcut key Z. With the scene panel selected, if I hold down the Z key, I can turn him into a puffer fish. And you can have any number of these different keyboard-driven uh, actions happening, again, all of which can be recorded as part of your scene. You'll also notice that I've got some bubbles emitting from my mouth here. For those of you who work regularly in After Effects, you'll know that this is obviously using some kind of particle system. And in fact, underneath your properties there, you'll see that one of the behaviors that we have are particles. 
So we've also got this layer here, the bubble particle. The bubble particle is actually what's known as a sub-puppet. What that means is, again, if we come over here to our particles, you see we've got this setting down here, emitter opacity. You can actually see the layer that was drawn, this actual bubble. This is going to show you where that bubble is going to emit from. And as a sub-puppet, it's going to follow the motion of the main puppet. So I can adjust the particles per second. That's a bit much. Maybe we'll go down to about one. I can adjust the velocity. Maybe we'll make this 600. I can adjust the spread. I can adjust the randomness. Put this to around 6%. I can adjust the direction ever so slightly, the bounciness. You've got wind strength. And again, just add more lifelike, expressive behavior to this character to really create something very, very unique, very, very cool. Now, as you're building up these characters, you may actually want um, multiple characters, right, as part of your scene. Seldom do we have just one character in an animation. So I'm going to show you now how you can actually have multiple characters and control and record different elements of a scene very, very quickly. So I'm going to open up this two-character scene. I'm going to set a rest pose. Let's adjust our frame rate again for me. Now, you can leave that at 12 frames or set it to whatever you like. I happen to like 24. And you'll see now, if we look down into our timeline, that both of these are selected for recording. Now, I have to admit, initially, I was wondering, why would you want two characters? And we're not going to do it this way, but I, I actually have a purpose for showing this to you. Um, I've been developing a children's music show uh, for some time now. And <laughs> it occurred to me that um, I actually may want animated versions of myself and other characters in this show. So it's a music show, so the characters are often singing. So here's a perfect example of where you'd have two characters, or three, or four, or however many you want, singing, speaking, lip syncing in unison. La, 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 la. Again, grown man doing this on camera, preserved for all posterity. Thank you. OK? So um, this is cool, but this is actually not what we want to do. I'm actually going to record a scene where the two characters are reacting to one another. So I'll start with, uh, oh, not the buddy. Let's go ahead and just start with our redfish here. And he's basically going to uh, have a little sneeze attack. You guys may recall two days ago we had that crazy sandstorm here, dust storm. And uh, I have terrible allergies, and so does my character version of myself, this pufferfish. <laughs> so he's going to sneeze, and then the other guy is going to react to it. So I'm going to record a take. I'm going to leave some space so I can do the voice of the other guy. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. And it's going to capture all the elements that you see here. Let's take it. All right. Whoa, that uh, weather was really crazy. I, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, man. I don't, I don't know what happened there. Okay. So, first take recorded. And if I twirl this down, zoom in here, now you can see all of the various <coughs> behaviors that were recorded as individual takes. And again, I can do multiple takes. I can then select the take that I want. Um, very, very flexible. So let's go over to our buddy now. Set him up for recording now. I'm not so crazy about having his, I don't, I don't know that I want any particles coming out of him. So let me go ahead and pull up his puppet for just a moment here. And I'm simply going to disable the bubble particle on him altogether. Now, another way to do this is I could have just uh, checked off having that parameter recorded in properties panel. I'm going to show you that too. Let me go ahead and turn off continuous mode. But you'll see here, if I double click on this, this is actually showing you in red all the various elements that will be recorded. Now, particles are still being recorded even though I've disabled them. If I don't want them recorded at all, I can just turn that off, OK? So now I'm not recording the particles. Set my rest pose again. Whoa, that uh, weather was really crazy. I, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whoa, what happened there? Sorry, man, I don't, I don't know what happened there. Okay. 
All right, so now we've got <clears throat> both characters recorded. Let's go ahead and wind this back and play. <clears throat> now we've got some uh, audio delay compensation built in. Uh, you're not actually seeing it here. This will be coming to you. And again, this is being released as a preview one. So um, there have been improvements made to this already since this version that we're showing here. And when this eventually comes to you in CC, uh, you'll see some really amazing things. But I love the way the lip sync is looking. Let's take a quick look at this. Whoa, that uh, weather was really crazy. I, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whoa, what happened there? Sorry, man. I don't, I don't know what happened there. <laughs> okay, it's looking a little bit delayed, but that's all right. You're just going to have to believe me. Now, at this point, you're probably wondering, how do we get this out of here and bring it into After Effects? Well, we can go up to the File menu, Export, Scene, and you can see you've got the option to either uh, export the video only or the audio only. We're going to do everything. And when you do that, it's going to create a ping sequence along with your WAV file, which you'll be able to import via the Script menu directly inside of After Effects. So we'll call this Two Fish Scene, place it on the desktop, save. And while that's exporting our animation here, let's go ahead and launch After Effects. While After Effects is running, it's going to continue to export. Let's click on Close. Come back over here. Back over to Character Animator. A couple more seconds for it to render out. When it's done, you'll see that it's going to pop up a dialog with all of our ping files, along with our wave, and a little JavaScript file. And again, this is the file that we're going to open via this script menu in After Effects. OK, so everything's exported. Back over to AE, File Menu, Scripts, New Comp from Character Animator Recording. OK, so this is a new option under your script menu there. And all we have to do is navigate to the folder, Two Fish Scene, Choose the first ping in the sequence, click Open. It assembles the sequence for us, and I can just scrub through it here. All right, and you can see everything was captured just like that. Okay? So very easy to record, capture all of those expressive behaviors, bring it into After Effects, continue to do more, composite more into your scene, and really build up a very cool animation very, very quickly. And the last thing I want to show you here is just a slightly more advanced puppet which also happens to be an Illustrator file. So again, we've been dealing with Photoshop files thus far. Let me go ahead and open up uh, our Frida puppet, and I'll set a rest pose. Incidentally, her name is Frida Badu. Set my rest pose. And again, as I move my eyebrows, Frida's eyebrows move. Position. Scale. You'll also notice down here that her feet seem to be locked to the ground, kind of doing an Axl Rose thing here. Um, again, among the many tools that we have in our puppet panel, you'll notice the pin tool. Same as the pin tool that you have in After Effects. So we've actually got her pinned, locked to the ground. Very nice lip sync here. You'll notice we've also got some dangle already applied to her earrings. Now, if I wanted to accentuate that even more, I can do that. I'm going to select her left earring, go over to Properties, Let's go ahead and add another dangle. And again, you're going to see this left earring here almost yo-yo <laughs> on her ear, and I think that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and adjust that. Pay attention to that left earring here. It goes Right? So again, very organic, very expressive, very really natural. And this is all from a, a, an Illustrator file that was just named appropriately, right? Follow the rules, name them the way we tell you to. No additional rigging is necessary. This character is just going to work. And again, just to kind of showcase that to you, if I simply edit original command E on Frida here, again, this is going to open up Illustrator. And you'll see the file in Illustrator. And just as I showed you that edit original workflow moments ago in Photoshop, the same applies here. So here's Frida. Very, very simple. <clears throat> OK. All right. So um, one of the other things that we've got going on in Free to Hear, aside from some keyboard triggers, so again, you saw before how I could take our monster fish and turn him into a puffer fish with a shortcut key. Well, we've also got something on Free to called the three-quarter turn, because what if, did you say something over there? Did you say something over there? <laughs> Yes, 
It's very odd doing this without hearing anybody talking back to me. But again, she can turn her head. And this is all being controlled by keyboard shortcuts. Down below here in the tools panel, we also have the mouse track tool, which I've applied to her hands. So if I wanted Frida to wave to you in the audience, I could click on her hand and say, hi, NAB. Hi, friends watching on online, like this, OK? And again, all of this can be recorded. Now, one other element that you'll notice, if you take a look here in the puppet panel, we've got these series of drawn uh, frames here of this VW microbus. And on this particular car layer, these images are going to cycle through using a property, a behavior rather, called cycle layers. And again, if I just go ahead and click on this car layer, cycle layers will do just that. They will cycle through those various images. And you can use this in a number of different ways. Um, I kind of do it in a rather silly way, which I think is kind of comical, which I'm going to show you now as I record all of this simultaneously. So with our scene panel selected, I'll go into record mode. And I'm simply going to say, hey, NAB, pick up my hand. Hey, what's going on there? Ah, there's a bus. Ah, and I'm cycling through over and over again on the bus. Tracked all of that, recorded all of that. Again, when it finishes, I can twirl this down. You can see all of the various properties that were recorded. We can do multiple takes. Think of this like multi-tracking different takes of your animation and choosing the ones you want all with standard Illustrator and Photoshop artwork, truly bringing these to life. Expressive, leveraging, again, your camera, your microphone, keyboard shortcuts, mouse tracking. And this is just preview one. So when we bring all of this to you, we want you to try it. We want you to tell you, we want you to tell us what you like about it, how we can improve this and make it better. We just sneaked this technology at Adobe Max a mere six months ago, and already we're bringing it to you. So this kind of gives you an idea of the amazing innovations going on at Adobe and how much we really want your feedback to allow us to make incredibly new, incredible new products for you and continue this innovation that is really the promise of Creative Cloud. So again, thank you so much for joining me, everyone. If you have more questions about Character Animator, please visit my colleagues just on the other side of the booth here. And uh, have a good last day at NAB. We'll see you next time.